and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, welcome. My name is Jen. This is Jen's Happy Home and on my channel, I love to share lots of day-to-day -day lifestyle stuff. I'm a mom of three kids, but also I love to travel. <laughs> and I am a travel agent for a company called Mickey World Travel. So I am sharing with you today some of the tips and tricks to exploring Universal Studios Florida and Universal Islands of Adventure because I just got back from a pretty long vacation that included both Universal and Disney. And let me tell you, I learned a lot of things and I continue to learn things as I travel to these places. And I'm going to share 20 tips with you today. So you might wanna grab yourself a drink, settle in, get comfortable, get a paper and pen, and be ready to jot down some of these tips because they are really important. So I have everything on my phone here. I'm just, I'm going to read from the list. They're in no specific order, but they are all very important. So the first thing that I have here is to make sure before you leave, you get the Universal app on your phone. This is super important. And make sure that you link your credit card to the app. This will make it so much easier for you to do mobile ordering on your phone, which is kind of a big deal right now throughout all of the Universal and Disney parks, you're going to be pulling up the restaurant, looking at the menu, placing the order on your phone, and then checking out on your phone as well. So you're already going to have your meal paid for and you will be ready to go. They will seat you in the restaurant and you'll have your food. So it's so much easier. I really love the option of mobile ordering. Sometimes it's not even an option, you have to do it. So make sure that you have that loaded onto your phone. Make sure that you have your credit card loaded onto the phone and when you're exploring the Universal app, you will also see that there are virtual lines that you can click on. So, so much easier rather than actually waiting on the line for things like Hagrid's motorbike, Jimmy Fallon, the Fast and the Furious, there's quite a bit of rides that are available on the virtual app. So you just have to see what's available to you at the day and time that you're there and you can just click on it. It's super easy. So definitely take advantage of that aspect as well. Because you're going to be using your phone so much, make sure that you have a portable charger with you. That is my tip number two. And if you're traveling to Universal multiple times, it might be worth it to you to get an annual pass. This way you can get discounts on food, merchandise, parking, and there is an annual pass lounge. And you'll get free perks like buttons and magnets and things like that as well. That's only if you're going to be going multiple times. Another great tip is to pay with your American Express card because there is an American Express lounge that you can also take advantage of in Universal where you can go in and just relax, get free drinks and snacks and things like that. So that's a nice little uh, VIP experience if you are an American Express card holder. Now for first timers, I feel like it can be confusing when you first enter the park. When you first go into Universal, a lot of people think you're walking like right into Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure, but you're not. You're going to be taking a long trip down City Walk, and this is where there are shops and bars and restaurants and things like that. So you're going to walk the strip and then you will find Islands of Adventure to the right and Universal Studios to the left. So depending on where you're starting your day, you're going to start it at the end of City Walk and then you're going to make a left or a right to the first park that you're going to get started with. Something else that is good to know is if you are either an annual pass holder or if you are staying in one of the Universal Resorts, you can have access to early entry, which believe me is a game changer. You definitely want the option of getting into the park early and sometimes there are some vacation packages that will also allow early access into the parks so that is definitely something to take advantage of if you can all right so let's take a moment to talk about staying in a universal resort because if you've been following any of my videos 
I will never, ever, ever go to Universal again without staying in a Universal Resort. It is so much more difficult if you are staying off property. So let me start off explaining some of the perks that you get if you stay in a Universal Resort. You'll have easy transportation, so easy. This is like the biggest deal to me through water taxis, buses, even walkways that you can walk right into the park depending on the resort that you're staying at. And you can also avoid the nightmare of the parking garage, which is not only $26 a day, but in my experience on one of the days of our trip, it took us, oh geez, two hours to get from the parking lot into the park because the crowds were so intense. There was a line that went literally through the entire parking garage. You could not even get near the studios. It was, it was insane. I just can't even explain to you guys how ridiculous it was. And in addition to that, the traffic getting to and from Universal Studios can also be insane. So you can very likely spend hours of your day driving into the park, driving back to your resort, and just trying to get from the parking garage into Universal Studios alone. I am talking about hours and hours of your day. Our resort was about 10 to 15 minutes away from Universal, and there were days where it took us over an hour, over an hour for a 10 minute drive to get from our hotel into the Universal Studios parking garage. Not fun. Stay in a Universal Resort for all of these reasons. If you want even more perks, stay in a Universal Premier Resort. And this is going to be the Hard Rock, it's going to be Portofino Bay or, or the Royal Pacific Hotel. If you stay at these resorts, you get the Express Pass for free. It's included with your hotel stay. Don't know what the Express Pass is? It is the golden ticket to avoid hours of waiting online. And it's very, very expensive to add on to your regular hotel resort stay or to your, like if you just purchase tickets and add it on, it's very expensive. So I think that you definitely get value out of staying in one of the premier resorts because you get the express pass and many of the headliner rides will have an express pass entry, an express pass special line that you go into with your little, uh, with your lanyard and your ticket on it. I don't remember if I wrote this on here, but definitely make sure you have a lanyard because you're going to be going from park to park and they're going to be asking for your park pass. If you do get park to park passes, which I'm jumping ahead of myself is, is pretty necessary. But anyway, let's just focus on the resorts right now. So you're going to just show them that you have the express pass, show them that you're staying at one of the premier hotels and they will let you get right on the ride. It's so quick and easy and so worth it. Okay, let me just tell you what the cost is if you decided that you wanted to add the express pass option, which is also one of my tips. If you don't want to stay at a premier resort and you just want to add the express pass to the ticket that you have, it's going to be $70 per person per day for the regular express pass. And that only allows you to go on one express ride, one time only. So you get, it's a one shot deal. You can't go on it multiple times. It's one and done. If you wanted to upgrade to the unlimited express pass for $90 per person per day, you get to go on the express pass rides multiple times rather than one and done. So it's 20 bucks more to be able to go on an express pass ride over and over. And if you do the math for a family of five at say $90 per person per day for the unlimited express pass, like do the math, you might as well stay at one of the premier resorts. Okay, another tip that you might wanna take advantage of is Universal does offer a dining plan and you do not need to be staying at a Universal Resort to take advantage of the dining plan that they do offer. Basically, all you need to do is buy a vacation package and I can include, or whoever, I mean, probably, may, hopefully, <laughs> 
hopefully you'll be reaching out to me if you want to plan your Universal or Disney trip, but um, we can add that to the vacation package and it may be worth your while, especially because lots of the packages come with a refillable mug. And if you watched my previous video that I did on Disney refillable mugs and what the value is, you can really save a lot of money on drinks if you do purchase the refillable mug. If you did not want to go ahead and do the whole dining plan, you can can just purchase the refillable mug alone and I think it's like the more you buy the less expensive it is so if you have a family of five you're going to be paying less for the additional mugs that you include in your purchase so that's something helpful to know as well. Something else that you may not know about Universal is they offer a photo package and they do have photographers throughout the park that will take your picture. You have like a little card that they scan. It's called My Universal Photos. And you can also find areas where, where there's an area that you can scan your card and it'll show you where to stand. There'll be like a little countdown and it will take your picture. So there is no photographer there, but they will take your picture. You can see your photographs in the app and it's 90 dollars a day if you purchase it while you're there. If you wanted to do some advanced planning, you can order it in advance for $69 a day. So definitely a great thing to have on your trips. I always love taking advantage of any type of photo service that a park offers because it's so much fun to have those pictures when you get home and sometimes you forget to take the pictures yourself so you will always have them. Okay, so for you Harry Potter fans out there and we are big Harry Potter fans in my family, you need to have the park to park passes. And that's why I mentioned earlier that that's something that's really important. I've never gone to Universal without getting the park to park pass. And that allows access to both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. And guess what connects the two? The Hogwarts Express. And you cannot ride that train if you don't have the park to park passes. And also they're very smart and universal because they put half of the Harry Potter stuff in Diagon Alley and the other half of the Harry Potter stuff in Hogsmeade. So if you want to have the full Harry Potter experience, which we all do, you're going to need those park to park passes to experience both and to be able to take the train and the train is different each way. So it's a different experience, a different um, kind of show that you see going on the scenery is different outside of the window and you really want to take advantage of that. I know these are in no like specific order, but my very, very first most important thing is staying on property. My second most important thing is get to the parks early, really early, even if you do not have early entry. So on the days that I got to the parks, 45 minutes before they opened. And for me, that wasn't great because I didn't have early entry because I stayed off property. But a lot of people obviously were already in the park because they did stay at a Universal Resort, but you're still a little bit ahead of the rest of the crowds coming in. And on those days, I didn't take quite as long to get into the parks. It didn't take me two hours, at least on those days. So definitely avoid the nightmare of getting into the parking garage, getting into the park. Like you don't know how long that's going to take if you're staying off property. I would recommend if the park opens at eight, getting there at seven or plan in your mind to get there at seven, you still might not get there till like nine, <laughs> depending, but at least anticipate arriving an hour to 45 minutes before park opening if you're staying off property. If you're on property, you're just gonna probably walk out of your hotel, take the path into Universal Studios an hour before everyone else, and it's gonna be easy breezy. I would recommend starting your day at Islands of Adventure and going to Hagrid's motorbike first. Even though the Velocicoaster is also equally as popular, um, Hagrid's has a tendency to break down and have technical issues a lot in my experience. And I think that that should be your priority is to get to that ride early. If there's a virtual queue, all the better, get on that virtual queue. But the virtual queue will usually bring you there later in the day. And if it breaks down, then it's gonna be more issues. So if it's up and running first thing in the morning, just get on it. We waited. <laughs> 
we waited two hours to get on it because while we were on the line, which I think at the time was about 90 minutes long, it broke down. And of course, we've already invested so much time waiting online, we just waited it out. But there are issues with that ride sometimes and it's amazing, you need to go on it. So make sure you get on it first thing in the morning. Another great tip is to travel to Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in the off season. So rule of thumb here is if the kids have off school, it's gonna be really busy. If you're planning on going summer break or Christmas, winter break, if you're going on spring break or any holiday weekends where the kids are out of school, crowds are going to be at their highest levels. Really, if you can possibly take the kids out of school and go during a time when school is in session, the crowds are going to decrease by a lot, making everything so much easier as far as waiting on lines, dealing with crowds, all of the things. Okay, so in Universal, a lot of the rides, I would say probably Probably most of the rides require that you put your bag, backpack, whatever it is that you're carrying in a locker. And the lockers tend to be relatively small. So if you have a really big backpack, you're going to have to upgrade to spend money on a larger locker to store it so that you can go on the ride. And there are locker areas you'll see right outside of the ride. So you will go put your bag in a locker and then when you get off the ride, you'll retrieve your bag. Um, the three pronged fanny pack are okay to wear on most rides, so keep that in mind if you wanna invest in one of those. If you can keep your phone securely in your pocket, and I mean securely because <laughs> You really need to be careful and remember your sunglasses too because I just about lost my sunglasses because on Harry Potter, The Forbidden Journey, I literally caught my sunglasses in the air. So make sure that you pack them in the locker as well. Some rides require that you also keep your phone in a locker. They don't even allow you to bring your phone with you. So. Keep that in mind. I know some people freak out about not having their phone with them, especially when a lot of those more popular rides are the ones that will require you do not have your phone with you, you're waiting online for a long time, and it's just like we're so used to having our phones. So um, definitely something that you need to know in advance. Also, if you're buying a wand at Ollivander's, those boxes that the wands come in are oftentimes too big for those teeny tiny lockers. So you might want to do your wand experience at the end of the day and you can just bring it back to the resort with you. Um, they do have wand holders too, just not for the box, but specifically for the wand. They're like holsters that go around your waist and you stick it in the holster. Also some of the robes that they sell um, have like a little wand holder too, but I definitely would do the wand experience towards the end of the day if you're going to be going on a lot of rides. This way you don't have to worry about what to do with the wand and the box you're gonna wanna keep. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. A lot of the rides in Universal cause motion sickness. I know a lot of people have an issue with that because the rides are like, most of the time, it's some type of a screen in front of you and you are virtually moving around, but actually moving around as well because like the seat that you're in is oftentimes moving or like actually moving like on tracks or sometimes you're just like in a seat and you're bouncing around but it's very visually stimulating so make sure that you either wear c-bands which is what I do or take some dranamine if you forget dranamine there are first aid centers that you can go to and they will give it to you for free islands of adventure has a first aid area like right at the beginning of the park where you enter and then over at Universal there is a first aid center by Fast and Furious so you can go ahead and get your Dranamine fix there if you need it. A lot of the queues in Universal have stairs. Many of them actually have stairs. So if stairs are an issue for you, make sure that you go on the Universal app and you can view any of the rides and the restrictions and it will let you know if it is wheelchair accessible and sometimes you will get up to a certain point and they will take you over to an elevator and you'll be able to get on the ride that way. But you definitely wanna double check, especially if there's a ride you're really looking forward to and you need it to be wheelchair accessible, just double check and make sure that you are good to go.
if you are shopping. And let me tell you, in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, I had a lot of shopping going on because they just have the most amazing things. Had to get my chocolate frogs from Honey Dukes, had to get some stuff from the Quidditch store. You know, we had to get our uh, jerseys and everything else. So if you plan on shopping, there is a place called It's a Wrap, and you can have your merchandise sent over to It's a Wrap, which is usually towards the exit of the park. And at the end of your day, you can go pick it up there. But if you're staying at a Universal resort, another perk is you can just have this stuff magically show up at your resort. So no worries. You can just have it waiting at your resort for you when you get back. Perfect. Okay. I think this is my last tip. <laughs> Moving right along here. All right. Definitely try to make dining reservations in advance. And I will have a blog post in the description below that will have the phone number. You can go ahead and call for dining reservations, but places like Toothsome Chocolate Emporium, Bubba Gump Shrimp, NBC Sports Grill and Brew, Cowfish, Vivo Italian Kitchen, Big Fire, there's so many restaurants and it's really worth taking advantage of the dining that is offered to you on City Walk because they have some pretty amazing restaurants. But especially if you're traveling in a busier time of year, you want to make sure that you have those dining reservations so that you're not waiting extremely long or being turned away from restaurants at the end of a long hot day in Universal when you just want to sit down and have a nice meal. So make sure that you make your dining reservations in advance. And also if you're doing any type of dining package or if you are booking through me, I can arrange for breakfast reservations because there are some character dining reservations that can be made and there are some really great uh, breakfast reservations that you can make in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So definitely take advantage of that, especially if you are the type of person who likes to eat breakfast in the morning, because we found that to be quite challenging, especially in the wizarding world. You did need at the time of our travel reservations at um, the Three Broomsticks or the Leaky Cauldron. And we were watching all those people in there eating all these great breakfasts and we were starving <laughs> and could not get in because we did not have reservations. Typically the counter service restaurants do not offer reservations. Most of the time you're ordering from the mobile app and being seated at a table. That was just our experience at the time of our travel. It depends on when you're going and what's going on because there's all kinds of things going on in Universal with the holidays and some of the special events that they have. So that is going to be it for today. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know by giving me a thumbs up if you made it to the end. <laughs> Let me know if you got all these tips tips in and please subscribe if you have not already. I'm always sharing fun tips and tricks on all types of places from cruises to Universal to Disney. Basically wherever I go, whatever I do, I come back and share all of my tips with you guys. So I hope that you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.